Hey, what's up, and a very big hello to everyone out there. Welcome into Fantasy Film Ball, the show where we turn movies into sports, and sports into something we don't talk about here. My name is Matt. And my name is Dylan. Today, we have something very special to go over because we are finally at the end of the first season of this whole podcast because the Oscars happened last night. But before we can dive into that, I just want to say 84% of the people out there, y'all aren't subscribed. If you like what you hear today, if you stay, you know, maybe consider leaving a like, drop a subscription, because we're going to still talk Oscars even after uh, we talk here today, because we oh, have yeah. to start the 2024 season. You think the Oscar season's over? You fools. You it's fools. It's just getting started. It's never over. The new one is just beginning. But yeah, so we're here to give our reactions to the Oscars. Now, we live in different countries. We couldn't react together unless we were o over a Zoom call and it would be so complicated. So we are now gathering back together a day after for our not live reactions to the Academy Awards this year. Uh, and before we begin, overall, I thought that this ceremony was pretty damn good. Not only were the winners super satisfying, I don't know if you'd agree, but <laughs> for me, I, I mean, all of my favorite movies of the year won awards literally my top four movies all won awards that's fantastic that's all i want but also i thought that the way that they presented categories was brilliantly done like having the costumes come out for costume design or showing the orchestras playing the scores so good so good they really nailed the production of it this year jimmy kimmel not great but Overall, I was really impressed with the way that they did the show. How did you feel about the show, Dylan? I love everything I've ever watched. So those wins, I'm cool with. It's some of the other ones that we'll dive into here shortly. Yeah. I wasn't the biggest fan of, but I do agree. I'm really happy with how the show was this year. The last two years were really, like, felt like, we don't like movies, but we have to do this show, so watch. And this year was actually, like, a celebration. They had montages. They had physical props, whether it was the costumes. They showed it clips. They made it seem like a very fun environment. And I get the, the, the whole host hate but i thought he had a really good monologue even as the show went on he got kind of more and more it's like the stuff that we're not like really a fans of as mm -hmm. hosts but i thought his opening monologue in like the first half of the show he was a very great host being full real uh the oscar party that i was at it was so loud that for the most part i couldn't hear anything there were some things that i definitely missed in that monologue but from what i caught i i wasn't too impressed but you know what he kept the show going he kept it moving and the host is not the star of the show. It's the speeches, and I thought the speeches were beautiful. There were so many that were so well done. Okay, if you had to pick one speech that just floored you more than the others, what would your favorite speech be? I mean, I think it's cheating, but Kiki Kwan for supporting actor was the, I think, the best speech of the night, head and shoulders above everything else. For me, the reason I'm not going to say Kwan is because I feel like at this point in the season, we've seen him win so many times. We've seen him tell his story. We kind of knew what to expect in that speech. And it was a great speech, but we knew what we were going to get. But for me, Ruth Carter's speech where she went up and talked about how her mom had just passed away the previous week and how she's still grieving and how this film is very much about that too and that this award and this movie is dedicated to those who have passed on. Beautiful speech. Her words were so incredibly powerful. And also, I just love that she color-coded her, I her like speech that. cue cards to her dress. Fantastic. So, yeah, Ruth Carter, for me, was just an unexpected win and one that uh, that speech really hit me hard. So that was my favorite speech of the night. Well, good. I, I, we some variety here. We we don't pick the same thing. Of course, of course. I mean, we almost picked the same thing in most of our predictions categories. But that brings us to uh, we're gonna get into every single category in the order that they were presented, and we're gonna like talk about what we felt as this was going on and how our Oscar scorecards filled out through the night. This is still a game and it's a competition, and we gotta see who won. We gotta see who won. No spoilers, it's, but it was me. No, no spoilers, but I think we start off with a category that everyone kind of knew who the winner was. And to me, as a viewer of the show, I feel like the winner knew he was winning because he was already backstage when he walked in to get his award. And that was <laughs> Del Toro winning p for Pinocchio. It's like he had them rearrange the order of the, the, <laughs> the presentations because he's like, look, I got to be somewhere in an hour. Can we do mine at the top? 
please? Thank you. That's <laughs> what it felt I, like. I wonder what the real reason was, because they did post the whole, like, oh, here's the rundown. And, like, an hour later, like, guess what? It's the same order, but animation is first. And then he was already backstage, so it's like, I know they say they don't open up awards ahead of time, but I kind of feel like they knew that one already. Well, <laughs> everyone knew that one. I'm so happy about Pinocchio winning. This is my second favorite movie of the year. It's one that I haven't gotten a chance to rewatch yet, but I'm so happy that it won. It's so deserving. The animation is so beautiful. And Del Toro's speech fucking slayed. So good. So at this point, we're one and one, right? Exactly, yeah. And we continue going two for two with supporting actor with Kihi Kwan for everything yeah. ever all at once. For sure, when we knew this was coming. And uh, where I think the night really got interesting was after that with Best Supporting Actress because it wasn't Condon, it wasn't Bassett, it was Jamie Lee Curtis. Didn't I tell you so? Yes, you did. And I really want to go with you. I just didn't believe that it was going to break that stat. But guess what? Maybe it did. As we go through this episode, we're going to talk about lessons that we learned this Oscar yes. season because every Oscar season, our hope is that we can get better and better at predicting. We are never going to be perfect. No one ever is because things will always break. There will always be stats that we think we know to figure this out that will always then change. But we want to try and learn so that we can get better. Stats will break if there's passion. That was shown even last year in CODA, right? And with this year, we saw spoilers the sound and editing stat break because of the passion for everything everywhere we saw the uh one win supporting actress stat break because of the passion for everything everywhere we saw the lead actor best picture stat break because of the passion for brendan fraser all over the place that is really the biggest lesson here and that's why jamie lee curtis won it's someone who I thought early in the year, because I think I mentioned, like, oh, I don't know what to do as a category. It's just Jamie Lee. People love her. And I, I went away from that. So I guess my big takeaway is, like, if I feel something, stick with it. Obviously, we'll see in some other categories. That didn't work out. But in other times, yeah. maybe it does. I had her early on, and I remember saying, I think Jamie Lee Curtis is going to get nominated. And a bunch of people said, are you crazy? Like, Stephanie Shoes in. And I'm like, no, 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 no. The old people in the Academy are gonna love jamie lee curtis it was uh judy dench on steroids i i guess to kind of defend jamie lee curtis a little bit because there's been a lot of hate for just the nomination but even the win now i think she's really good in the movie and i fully get why they they pick i don't think this is gonna go down as like one of the worst wins of all time like a lot of people i've seen in the last 24 hours say i think that goes That's to another category absurd. for acting it's absurd that people are saying that jamie lee curtis is one of the worst wins of all time like yes i know it's an acting prize not a campaigning prize but everything ever all at once would not have won best picture without jamie lee curtis she was the one who got out there and told her old white friends in the academy which is still the majority of the academy it's old white people still she was the one who got out there and said look, this movie is special and you need to give it a goddamn shot because it deserves it. She was the one who mm -hmm. did that. Jamie Lee was the reason that this movie swept. You don't get seven Oscars, everything, everywhere without Jamie Lee Curtis. To defend her performance, she's unrecognizable in the role. She disappears into it. She flexes again, just like Michelle Yeoh. She flexes every muscle that she has ever had as an actor, comedically, dramatically, she shows her range, and she just has so much fun with it. You can see that she's just losing herself in every moment. She does a lot in this movie. She's unrecognizable. She's funny. She has that, that charisma, and she also has a big heart, which this movie, as we've talked about all season long, has that. And as you mentioned, she's the one who really raised this movie up above. Like, yes, I think we can all collectively agree in our age demographic. Like, we much rather would have Stephanie Sue, because that's who we relate to more. Yeah. But as you mentioned... The older demographic is going to relate way more to Jamie Lee, and I think I think they're both great. I would be cool if either one of them winning. And honestly, this year's supporting actress line have had a lot of just interesting type performances, but I think Jamie Lee's and Stephanie Sue's are the two that are the most different. And I'm, I would be cool if either one of them taken this way. That was the point that I had way back in August when I said Jamie Lee is getting nominated. It was because I was just like yeah, this is a performance that's going to resonate with older voters. I didn't even know she was going to campaign her ass off the way that she did. I was just thinking, like, 
she's a Hollywood rock star. She's been around the block for so long, and she's doing something that's going to connect with people. It's emotional, it's funny, and she gets to do things she's never done before. She gets to do crazy stunts, and she gets to do fighting and do wire work. How fun is that? You can see she's having fun in this role. She's having so much fun, and honestly, I, I, I get where the hate for this is coming, but I think it's really unwarranted. I really think that people are making shit up to be mad about, honestly. Every year, you're going to have that, and because this year went to most of the, you can say, film Twitter favorites. They they don't have anywhere else to really throw their, their anger. So this is what's going to get it, because our next two categories moving past supporting actors were two pretty easy ones, and I guess this goes to our whole like lessons to learn. Best documentary feature went to Navalny. If something has political relevance, it's a good documentary and gets nominated, it's going to win. And Best Live Action Short went to An Irish Goodbye, which continues the whole, hey, if you're the only English nominee, you're probably going to win for better or for worse. Yeah. Shout out to, I didn't realize until this weekend that the director of Navalny is a guy from Toronto. So shout out to Daniel Rower. The doc's great. And like you said, it was political. We stuck with our guns there. We went, if this gets nominated, it's going to win because it is such a great way to say, hey, fuck you, Putin. Not like Putin's going to hear the Academy Awards saying that. It doesn't. It's not a message that he's going to get. It reminded me of Icarus all season long. And that's why I stuck with it. So at this point, I got a perfect score. I'm, I'm riding high. And then things kind of went to shit a little bit later for me. But at this point, I'm feeling great. An Irish goodbye gets it. I'm like, God damn, am I going to call the shorts? Am I going to call the shorts? This is crazy. Uh, spoiler alert. <laughs> yeah. I fucking call the shorts, man. Hey, oh, God. I-, I at least got live action short with you. I got the other two wrong, but we'll get to them yeah. in a second. Because as you may be perfect at this moment of the night, I have one loss, and that is for supporting actors. However, these next three categories... I get wrong. Maybe you can say I was hope dicting. Maybe you can say the answer was right there. But to me, two of these three are major upsets. But the first one we have is Best Cinematography that went to the BAFTA winner, All Quiet on the Western Front. I am so upset at myself <laughs> for swaying at the last goddamn minute. At the last goddamn minute, I let ASC sway me because I was like, you know what? Austin Butler's winning. Elvis is going to walk away with a whole goddamn package. This was my number one for cinematography this year. And I had it there from the moment nominations were announced until like four days ago. I remember you changed it right here. I changed it. I know. I'm a fucking idiot. Well, I I played my (laughs) part in that. I I tried my best to be like, hey, Elvis, this is the one category where like, yeah, maybe I didn't use my brain to predict. I used my heart and I I thought it was going to work out. But when you talk about how we're going to go through these awards talking about how like we felt yeah. in the moment of the night this is when i realized elvis is gonna struggle like this wasn't an award it was mm. expected to win but this clearly showed like hey they don't like it that much not enough to give it this win and they do like all quiet because that moves us yeah. into best makeup and hairstyling where uh elvis oh, had i think a up. guaranteed win i would yeah. say even more so than costumes and it lost to uh, <laughs> it lost to the whale which i get that this is a makeup award but it's not just a makeup award it's a makeup and hairstyling award the whale has makeup on one person elvis has makeup and hair on hundreds if not thousands of people and this is the point of the night even more so than the jamie lee moment where i was like okay they're clearly voting for their passion they're cl- voting for like what feels good what feels right and not maybe more so for like hey what is a the like the, the the like the technically best, which that's completely okay. There's times that works in like my personal favor. Sometimes it works in my not to my personal favor. But um, this award I would say is the biggest one. The night is just like, I get it, but also it makes just no sense to me. Someone at my Oscar party said that when they do predictions, because they don't follow the season, they just mm-hmm. swap out best with most, right? And that's how they predict awards. Is they just go, well, what has the most editing what has the Mm -hmm. most sound right and that leads them to everything everywhere top gun when it comes down to this category i actually do think that they went with the best choice it wasn't the most it was the least right there was just one character done extremely well it's just that it was one person versus elvis where i think that the makeup was okay 
but it was done on so many different people that it was the most hair and makeup. I wouldn't say it was the best, because the whale, they really did something spectacular there. But yeah, this is the moment in the night where I... Cinematography, I went, oh, okay, I should have predicted All Quiet. I guess they like All Quiet more than I was expecting them to. This is the moment where I went, oh, Jesus, I made a mistake predicting Elvis for four awards. I did as well, because the next category we have is Best Costume Design, where the whole Elvis, like, hey, Elvis could do well, dies. Because <laughs> costume design went to Black oh. Panther Wakanda Forever, which, hey, I do want to give you your flowers again. You did, you get, you did call this. I called it ages ago, but I swapped off of it. But it was mm-hmm. around the time of the Critics' Choice Awards where when it won, I was like, oh my god, it's winning. But also, big shout out to this year. I went through my list, my ranked list of every single category this year. And I swear, like, 18 or 19 out of the 23 categories went to my number one in the category. That's good. And and this is one where I was like, I was not predicting Black Panther. I was overjoyed that Black Panther won. It was the best costume design of the year. Ruth Carter gave an incredible speech. Her work on that film deserves it. I know you're not big on the movie, but god damn, Dylan, the costumes. The the costumes. It's the one thing in Wakanda Forever that was better than the original. I I will argue that to the grave. They stepped the costumes up so hard. No, I agree. I'm, I'm really happy for her. I thought the costumes were great. I honestly think this category is really, really good. It's very strong. I know there's Babylon detractors, but I think the costumes really worked for what the movie's going for. Yeah, they're not accurate, but I think they work. Uh, Mrs. Harris Goes to Paris has beautiful costumes. Everything everywhere has eye-popping ones, and Elvis has fantastic recreation. So I would have been happy with every, anyone winning here. So uh, this category was one I was like, yeah, maybe I preferred something else, but I'm still happy with the win. And that carries over to a category that we all knew the winner. So a little bit of the sporacness gets to stop here because All Quiet on the Western Front does win Best International Feature. But, you know, I could still be yeah. a little sad that our donkey friend did not walk away. Well, they didn't. They brought Jenny out on stage, but not Eo. Exactly. What the hell, it been, Oscars? Could have been a great moment. Could have been a great moment. You have two donkeys. They give them their moment to shine. And hey, Triangle of Stannis is there too. Three donkeys. Get them all there. But yeah, I mean, with international, I love that at this moment. Uh, well, let's also let's just rewind because I think at this point you and I were texting, and you were like, "Oh my god." Was Jimmy Kimmel telling the truth when he said All Quiet won Best Picture at the to very be honest, beginning of the show? I, I thought he was telling the truth all the way up into Adapted, but we'll get to that shortly. So he says that at the beginning of the show, but at this point, when Edward Berger gets up on stage and he brings the entire team, normally for Best International Feature, it's just the director that goes up, but he brought his whole team up in a way that felt like they had just won Best Picture, and I was like, Ooh, this feels like they know that they're not winning Best Picture. Obviously, no one knows that they don't that they're not winning. Everyone's hoping that they win. Mm-hmm. When the All Quiet team all came up on stage, I was like, "Ooh, I feel like they're all like, yeah, we're not winning tonight. Let's just get our moment. Let's have our Best Picture moment right here." I, I guess to um, go off of that, you're like, "Oh, everyone hopes to win." I have just loved all season Hong Chao. Like, she knows she's not winning, and she like embraced yeah. that in her interview. She's like. I'm not winning, but I'm happy that Britain's here or I'm happy that the makeup or something like that. Like there's all these interviews and Mm -hmm. she's always talking about the other people. And it's like, I don't really care about myself. Well, she said that because she said she got her hopes up so much in 2017 for downsizing that Mm -hmm. she was, she was hoping so much. People were telling her you're amazing. You're going to get nominated. And the nominations came around and she didn't. And so she says that she, this season has kind of put a shield up where she's like, I'm just happy to be in the conversation. I don't give a shit what happens. <laughs> I yeah. don't care because I know I'm going to be hurt if I care too much. So that, that is good. Yeah, I, I think it's a great attitude that Hong Chao went into the season with, which is why when Jamie Lee won, we, we saw Stephanie Hsu and, um, and Hong Chao just like lose it because they were so happy for her. And we didn't mm-hmm. see the same from Angela Bassett and Carrie Condon, which I think is, is tough because both of them thought they could win. And I feel like the moment when you hear you don't win when you expect it, you're going to be in shock for a second. You know? Yeah. I also thought like all like because I wa- this is the first time I've ever watched all like the pre-show like red carpet for like three hours. Mm-hmm. And any time someone who actually had a chance to win, they come up like, oh, are you excited to win tonight? Like what do you really want them to say? And some people took the bait, like Carrie Khan's like, oh, I hope I do. Or Angela Bassett's kids like, mom, you got this. And it's like, like you're setting, like, yeah. obviously like, you want to win, but at the same time, 
it's just a very weird spot. Like, obviously, I'm not in that situation, but yeah. like, it feels like a weird spot to be in sort of thing. No, that's that's the thing. If I was ever nominated for an Oscar, I would want everyone to tell me I was going to fucking lose. Mm-hmm. I wouldn't want to be a frontrunner. I wouldn't want to be frontrunner adjacent. I wouldn't want that because I'd go into that evening with the worst pit in my stomach. I wouldn't be able to enjoy anything. If someone told me you might win, then I'd be like, oh, God damn it. <laughs> no, get me out of here. <laughs> Please, no. So, like, I I can understand how they're feeling there. I would want to feel like I was going to fucking lose. And that's why Hong Chao was killing it this season. Because she was like, yeah, it's not happening for me. That's fine. Whereas, you know, Carrie Condon, Jamie Lee Curtis, and Angela Bassett had all won different things. Yeah. They all had been told, you're going to win tonight. And that can lead to a lot of disappointment. Uh, but this isn't a conversation about their reactions or anything. We won't go into that because there's been some really awful microaggressions online and we're not here to, mm-hmm. you know, police how people react. The reactions are very justified. Um, but yeah, I think it's really cool that Hong Chao was like, yeah, screw it. I don't care. Well, don't that care. mentality is what you and I had to carry over to these next two categories because we were we, we had the right winner and we changed it. And best documentary short and best animated short because the respective winners were The Elephant Whispers and The Boy, The Mole, The Fox, and The Horse and not Stranger the Gate. And I ended up switching to My Year of Dicks. I think you ended up with Ice Merchants. I'm, I'm not upset about these. Like, I get it. I, mm-hmm. I get it. Uh, they went with the favorites. Should we have went with the favorites? Maybe, but I will just say these were stat breakers. And so Hopefully, I don't yeah. feel I don't feel bad <laughs> predicting Stranger at the Gate because it was a profile doc, it was political, and a nature doc hadn't won since 1968. So those three, I was like, yeah, Elephant Whispers might be the front runner. It's not winning. Mm-hmm. So I don't feel bad about not predicting it because it everything was riding against it despite the fact that the odds were in its favor and the same thing i felt the exact same way for boy the mole the fox and the horse it's too childish we've seen those movies lose over and over in previous years like just last year they go for more adult themed movies they go for stories about parents and kids but i guess what we didn't factor in is that apple just campaigned the fuck out of that film so they did and the thing the reason why i was still riding with the boy the mole all the way up until i switched at the last minute is it has stars in it. It has recognizable people. Like last year, Robin Robin didn't have Idris Elba in it. It didn't have big Hollywood. It names had in Richard it. E. Grant, Academy I mean, Award nominee, BAFTA host. Okay, okay, but I would say in the year 2021, 2022, not the same level of star yeah. power. I guess is my point. So like, it had everything on top of the whole Apple promotion. And I don't know. Everyone was just saying it's not gonna win. I was like, okay, I, I believe y'all. I don't know what to do. I said that here. It's like I don't know. My year of dicks, ice merchants, where to go to? Yeah. But I guess I'll just go away from this because, like, like you said, a, uh, animated short has never been forty minutes and wins. It hasn't recently been very childish, and mm-hmm. this shows. Hey, you just gotta go with what seems right, even if it doesn't really align with the stats. So that brings us to a category that we thought was a done deal, but in fact was not because best production design did not go to the Academy's you know favorite movie Elvis that won zero awards, or the other Academy's favorite movie Babylon that was only nominated twice it goes to the real favorite all quiet on the western front continues its dominance at this point i think it had won four categories that was nominated for in a row or maybe yeah. three. and at two. this point uh, it was this was the third one for all quiet okay. at this point i was like oh my god <laughs> oh god that doesn't even go for it i know because i that was no one was predicting this this is the biggest shocker of the night no one had All Quiet. Not a single person. Like, you'd have to be crazy to put All Quiet in production design, or just not have followed anything, because Babylon had swept, and it just shows just how much the Academy didn't like Babylon, when the BAFTAs, who also didn't like Babylon, still gave it production design over their favorite movie, All Quiet. I would just love to have, like, a like I listen to someone who just despised Babylon those in the Academy just go off like, oh, here's why I didn't like its production design or score, because I guess the pair of best production design, they showed best original score afterwards. All Call on the Western Front upsets here as well. And I think, if I'm remembering correctly, they were showing like best picture nominees as they were rejoining from commercial breaks throughout the night. And this was a time that had just shown All Quiet as it's like, here's your best picture nominee, and then it wins production design and scores. Like, okay, are we are we going to what I think we're going? Jimmy, were you right in your little monologue at the beginning? 
It would be, I mean, if he was right, I feel like there would be, like, an investigation. He should have made the joke about, like, Triangle of Sadness or something. Well, no, I, I told I, the people who I was watching, I was like, that's a funny joke, but you make it about a movie that's not nominated. Like, you say, oh, it was Morbius, or, like, something that was, like, a little more funnier than maybe Morbius. But, like, you don't use an actual nominee, because I, I thought he was for real for, like, a good hour. Like, I was telling people, like, oh, no, I, I think he's for real. With Score, this was one where I, I was genuinely thinking any of these movies could win and so i wasn't it wasn't a shocker that all quiet won it had the bafta and it clearly had the passion from both the academy and from bafta as well so yeah it wasn't a shocker that it won but it was not my pick here it was not what i thought was winning i had fablemans you had everything everywhere and for me if i didn't have fablemans i would have had everything everywhere at this point in the night i wasn't surprised because i was like yeah it makes sense it's yeah. winning everything. It's winning everything. And I was like, oh my god, it's winning. It's winning adapted screenplay, and then it's going to be a threat for picture. And then what if it wins? Like, what if it fucking wins at this point? Oh my god. As, as soon as Babylon lost production design, I knew that All Quiet was getting score. Um, yeah. Just because why would you give it score if you didn't give it production design? And yeah, I, I guess I guess we just have to admit that the bomb, bomb, bomb is just Trump's. Like, I think the rest, I think the whole score is good. But whenever people talk about the score, they only talk about that one part. And like, I don't know if that's a negative or a positive because like, obviously that part is so good. But the rest of the score is pretty good too, and no one talks about well, that. The, I'd say actually the rest of the score is even better than that. But because for the rest of it, it's very ambient. It really provides the tone. And the use of the the Sean Kingston fire burning notes, the use of that little ba ba ba, is to make you feel unsettled, right? Mm-hmm. It's not used much through the movie. So we go from an award that isn't used very often in the movie to an award where the whole movie is this award, and that is Avatar: The Way of Water winning Best Visual Effects, which. To me, this was one of my favorite wins of the night because I got to see Avatar actually win something, but it also was probably like my least favorite point of the night because they cut them off and then made a series of dumb jokes to kill time. I know. That's always the worst part of this. Also, how brutal was it this year that instead of... Because normally what they do when they cut people off, they don't cut the goddamn mic. <laughs> normally they let them keep talking and they just have the music to be like, hey, wrap it up. Your time mm-hmm. is over. But this time they would cut the fucking mic and be like, hey, here's music and you're done. You're done. I mean, I was kind of hoping they would actually have the not to not to dancers come out and dance them off. Like, I think that would have been like very like not good, but it would have been what? funny to watch at least once. Everyone thought that he was being legit when he said that and so yeah. through the night at the oscar party people were like where are the not too not too dancers why are they not dancing them out i'm like guys that was that was a joke that was a bit i mean <laughs> it's not i mean it's Kwan not a real definitely thing. went over the uh the 90 second little time marker they gave and i was like if they're really gonna like play him off that's a no yeah. that would be a bad look but i think they i mean you can say it's for better or for worse they, they they knew when to play people off and when not like the stars, like Quan, Jamie Lee, Yo, whoever, they got to go over their 90 seconds while, sadly, the visual effects or, like, the sound or uh, the documentary team. short, makeup team, they're the ones who end up getting cut off, which stinks because, like, those are, like, the categories you just, like, screwed over last year. And then this year, like, okay, well, you one person gets to talk, so make sure you, like, really know it. And I forgot which category it was, but it may have been all quiet in the score where, like, they realized what was going on. So, like, okay, I'm going to keep talking as the next person walks up, and that way there's no silence for them to actually play us off. But anyways, we're we're past Avatar in visual effects, which we all knew was going to happen. Avatar got its win. What's next? Next, we have our screenplays, which I thought this was a very cool, like, way they presented it. Like, for original screenplay, they start off with, like, the tight shot, and they read off, like, the synopsis oh, yeah. or something and slowly zoomed out. But they didn't do that for adapted, so it was really weird to me that you just did it for one category and not the other. But our screenplay winners, which I think kill last year's, are Everything Ever All at Once and Women Talking. Thankfully wins over All Quiet on the Western yeah. Front. <laughs> yes! I was so happy. Well, at this point in the night, where I'm at is All Quiet has won four awards. Everything Ever has won two, and I'm like, oh my god. <laughs> oh no. What if Banshees wins here? Like, what if, what if this is the downfall of everything everywhere right now and All Quiet wins adapted and then it takes picture? That's what I'm mm-hmm. thinking. So I was so happy. I, I was worried for a second that everything everywhere was going was gonna to fall. But here you go. It takes screenplay. And then they give a great speech. 
was that I think that this was the one where Daniel Scheinert thanked public school teachers. I think which so, yeah. I thought was that was fucking spectacular. What a class act! Oh my god! Uh, and then Sarah Polly wins. I was so so happy. I couldn't hear her speech, which was painful for me because I'm such a huge fucking Sarah Polly stan. I I think she's just incredible. And I couldn't hear what she was saying because uh, the party was <laughs> so loud. I think the big takeaway here is that, hey, your movie doesn't have to be a top three, top four contender to win screenplay. You just got to be nominated because Women Talking was probably number nine in Best Picture, maybe eight. And All eight. Quiet is definitely number two. Yeah, I, I don't think you need to be the strongest movie in the category in terms of awards. You just have to be the best script, you know? And yeah. yeah. It, it was a more writery script. It wouldn't have made sense for All Quiet to win. It just wouldn't have. Like, even though, yes, that movie probably was second place in the preferential ballot i mean i know we disagree on this from last year i think both of the winners don't make sense either however we go from two i think great winners into two more great winners but these are the real people's champions of the night because top gun maverick gets his award and rrr gets his award for best sound and best original song top gun sound it's good this was another one where i was like okay all quiet lost here it's definitely it's losing steam it had its four mm -hmm. awards and now it's just not going to win anything else. And then, Natu Natu. Actually, before we go on, let's just quickly talk about these performances. Yeah, I, I was going to bring that up next, yeah. I'm so happy that Natu Natu won here. So deserved. I know you're not a huge fan of the song. What do you think of the Natu Natu performance? I like the performance. I'm not, not a fan of the song. I just don't get the hype everyone else gets sort of thing. So I guess that makes it's me so not fun. As, as, as fan. It, it is fun. I just, it's got I, a great I don't know. beat, great instrumentation. The, the vocals are great. I like, I like the vocals. It's a great track. I re-listened to all these songs on my way home from work uh, before the Oscars. I really like the vocal quarter that's used during the hook. Like the, the I, I don't know exactly like what's going on in the song at that moment, but there's like a vocal quarter as their whole like one note for like three, four seconds. That part's really good. But yeah, for the actual performances, Not To Not To I think was the most fun. Hold My Hand I think was the best performance. Really? I don't really, I don't really know what applause was. Um... This is a life was really rough, but I commend them for trying. And Lift Me <laughs> Up had its had its good moments, it had its bad moments. I'm just happy that uh, all the songs actually got to be performed this year because it's always so weird to me when like only three are performed, only four are performed. Like I get people have time commitments, but like it's to me it just is weird when you don't have all five songs being performed. Here's my ranking: I go not to not to, which I thought was a spectacular performance. I've watched it multiple times now just to be like. Yeah, it's, they did such a great job with playing it live. The dancing was great. The reenacting of the scene, I think, was so well done. I mm -hmm. thought it was fantastic. Then I'd go Lift Me Up. Rihanna has this miraculous thing where she sounds identical to the way that she does in a studio when she performs live. Hold My Hand was very stripped down. You could tell that they decided that they were doing it literally four hours before. It was incredibly well done, and I liked how stripped down it was. Then, oh, it's a tie for last place. Um, applause is a worse song. It is a much worse song. This Is A Life is one of my favorites in the category. I really like This Is A Life, but that was a really rough performance. Applause, just like eh, the song, like whatever. But yeah, this is a life. It felt like they hadn't rehearsed it. Every performance besides Not To Not To sounded off key or not pitched right. Like Rihanna had moments where she was either what? ahead or behind of the backing no. vocals. <laughs> Lady Gaga started off a little rough and got better as it went on. And I agree with that. Sophia Carson didn't pronounce words half the time. So, um,. Overall, I thought all the performances besides Not To Not To were kind of rough. I just think Hold My Hand was such... It, it was just so different than what I thought it was going to get. So it gets like the bonus points there. I, th I would say that and Not To Not To are my two favorites. I, yeah. I, I just really want to know what convinced Lady Gaga to want to come in at the last minute to do it. Our next award, film editing, went to everything, everywhere, all at once. Hey, stats, they're meant to be broken. The stat is broken. It's broken and... It's probably going to be back on next year because I'm going to say right now Oppenheimer or Dune is probably winning editing and sound together. They could like, split. Probably. They could split. They could split, but I would say that Oppenheimer is probably winning both unless Christopher Nolan fucks up the sound again like he did on Tenet. I mean... So who knows, but there's there's less 
for for this one. So hey, they 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 did like the womp score this year, so they could like the womp sound mixing next year. That's true. That's true. But yeah, I mean, I I think that it's it just goes to show that these stats can be broken and will be broken if there's enough passion and if it makes sense. Like everything everywhere, it made sense for it to win even without sound because there's so much editing like mm-hmm. my my friend who was saying you can just swap out best with most in most categories and it makes sense and you know everything everywhere is the most there uh aside from maybe elvis actually but everything everywhere they, hand they hand. did so much they did so much with that and it makes sense what did you think of this win here i mean i i like it i like i've said m- numerous times that's the first thing i get from the movie after kwan is the editing uh even though I like Elvis more, I would vote for everything everywhere in this category. I, I think mm-hmm. that our nominees here are a very eclectic group. Like, you have a bunch of different types. You have Everything Everywhere, which is, like, the most. You have Maverick, which is a very, like, tightly edited film. Banshees, which is the shortest runtime, but knows when to cut the camera. Tar, which has the extended long takes, but also has very chopped up sequences. And then Elvis, which is Elvis. So, you, you got a lot of different types here. Yeah. Um, for Best Director, you have our sweeper of the season. Daniel Kwan, Daniel Scheinhardt, the Daniels themselves win for everything, everywhere, all at once. And if the best picture lock wasn't secure by now, it definitely is. Oh, yeah. They had this in the goddamn bag. No one <laughs> directed harder this year. No one brought a more singular vision. They deserve this award, and they deserve this whole season. So I, I j- I'm just blown away that the guys who made Turn Down for What's music video <laughs> are now Oscar-winning directors. Three-time Oscar-winning directors. That brings us to our Best Lead Actor Award, where I will now, for the first time in three years, can admit that I got the Best Lead Actor wrong from predicting from first predictions because it was not Austin Butler for Elvis. It was Ooh. The Whale. So, Ooh. another L. Well, this was one that, like, coming into tonight, I feel like it would be wild not to predict Austin Butler because he had BAFTA and there was just so much passion and the, and Elvis looked like it was going to win, like, four awards. So it was just like, how would you not go with Austin Butler? You know, there are years where BAFTA goes four for four, usually three for four, but there are years where they go four for four. And this year it was SAG because they were the last ones. And people, they love a narrative. And they don't just love a narrative because, like, Angela Bassett had a narrative, right? Um, Austin Butler had a narrative. Narratives only work when they make you feel good about voting for them. The narrative Austin Butler had was a narrative that might have worked like 10 years ago to be like, oh my god, he got so deep in character, he couldn't stop. But, like, that's nothing compared to, hey, Brendan Fraser, like, lost everything and, like, wasn't getting any work, and he was basically blacklisted from Hollywood, and now he's got this huge role, and, like, look at him shine. Yeah, I just think that, like you said, SAG, or even if BAFTA now becomes afterwards, I think whatever award show is last... That is who's more important, because who knows, next year maybe BAFTA's last, and it's going back to the BAFTA's 4 for 4, and the year after that, then maybe they just flip-flop every year. Who knows, but yeah. my big takeaway for Best Lead Actor is, hey, you don't need a Best Picture uh, correlation if you're just that narrative and passion-driven, and if you win the final award and you're in the top two, you're probably going to win the Oscar. Next year, we're not going to see another winner from, from a film that's not nominated for Best Picture. We're not going to see that again, right? It's a very rare thing that that's going to happen. And the reason it happened this year is because people just love Brendan Fraser so much. I mean, if Pasha was so strong, our best lead actress would obviously be Andrea Riseborough, right? <laughs> but, but the real winner, who did have the most passion, and a very rightful winner, very happy for her and for Fraser, would be Michelle Yeoh for Everything Ever All At Once, winning best lead actress, which, again, hey, SAG matters, timing matters, and passion matters, too. Wanting to win matters. Being yes. grateful to win matters. There, I saw multiple anonymous ballots saying that Kate Blanchett's speech at the Critics' Choice Awards did rub them the wrong way, where she said she didn't want to win. I think wanting to be there is like a big bonus, because all four acting winners were like, oh my god, I can't believe I'm here right now. This is amazing, I can't believe it. And so yeah, Michelle Yeoh, what a great win. Oh my god, it, was, it felt so good to watch her win. I was also worried because I was like, oh, what if Quan and Curtis win? And Michelle Yeoh doesn't. I was worried about that, but at the same time, I just couldn't see a world where Curtis wins, but Yo doesn't. And then when someone screenplay, I was like, okay, we're we're good. Yo's winning. I was so worried there for a moment, but then it all kind of it all came back around and it all worked out. So Michelle Yeoh got her Oscar, and she deserves it. What a great group! The first 
film to win Best Picture and three acting awards. The third film ever to win three acting awards. Like, I never would have expected it. I never would have expected it. I still remember seeing the trailer for the first time in front of No Way Home. I was like, that looks interesting. I I, I don't know how to feel about it. Like, I love A24. I like a lot of the actors involved, but, like, I don't know. And then I heard the buzz. Like, okay, this movie's good. And I was a little late to seeing it. And then once I saw it, I was like, okay, yeah, this movie's, like, amazing. I can't wait to see where it goes. I hope people actually support it. And then it kept just chugging along. And as we've seen, it's been out for over a year now. And, hey, it won Best Picture. Dude, biggest L of the season, my mom. She was at South by Southwest, and I was like, hey, mom, you have to go see everything ever all at once. You have to. And so she went to the premiere. She lined up for two hours. And just before going in, she learned that South by Southwest has a no bags allowed policy. She had a purse with her, and they turned her away at the door. She watched everything ever all at once for the first time like two weeks ago with me. And so (laughs) she was at the premiere. And then you want to know the craziest thing? She came back for Marcel the Shell the next day and brought a bag again. Did they let her in that time? (laughs) No. (laughs) For everyone out there, your biggest lesson for next Oscar season is do not bring a purse or a book bag when you go see the future Best Picture winner at a film festival yeah i'm south definitely taking west. that to heart specifically south by southwest well. it's about guns for sure for sure they didn't say why and my mom was like oh it's because they want you to buy their tote bags and i'm like no i'm pretty sure it's because it's in texas and they don't want you to bring a fucking magnum into the theater like, probably probably <laughs> so, mm. <laughs> well with that being said definitely drop in the comments of how you how your oscar scorecard looked because i will admit here i can take all the l's across i did not have a good year this year i got about like 60 or so percent on gold derby i'm much better at predicting nominations than i am at predicting wins because i always pick the wrong horse in two horse races like elvis and all quiet tonight for cinematography so i always go with things that are probably not as smart as i should do so um yeah, I mean, I'll admit, I got eight wrong. I did about as well as I expected, but I I have never done as well as I've hoped to. But I won my Oscar pool. I got the highest at my party. That was good. Hey. That was nice. That hey, was pretty good. Th- that, that is what matters at the end of the day, because even though, like, hey, if Elvis would have won, like, three or four awards, we'd be really happy with our results. But sadly, that's not what happened, but we can yeah. always look towards next year to do better. And with that being said... If you're watching out there on YouTube, we'll have a episode out later this week with our first, like, big predictions for the 2024 Oscars. Exactly, it. exactly. You got, you got to get ahead of the curve because, I mean, I have no clue what's getting nominated next year, but I sure want to be, have, like, stake my claim if I'm right about something super early. Well, with all that being said, I can't wait to dive back into the Oscar season next year. Definitely make sure to... Drop your comments down below. Leave a like. Subscribe if you liked what you heard today. I mean, you made it like 40 plus minutes, so you had to like something. But until next time, my name is Dill. And my name is Matt. And this is Fantasy Film Ball.